A superconductor is a special material that has zero electrical resistance. So when a current flows through it, the material doesn't heat up. You'll know that most materials heat up when electrical current flows through them. Some inventions even exploit this, like the toaster or the old style light bulb. This property of superconductivity only comes into effect when the material is extremely cold. Most conventional superconductors, like those found in MRI scanners, operate at around 4 Kelvin, or minus 269 degrees C. A superconductor material also excludes all magnetic fields, so will push away from other magnets and can levitate. Superconductors are important materials for fusion, particularly for tokamaks or other machines that use magnets to confine the hot fusion fuel. Fusion reactors rely on the production of enormous magnetic fields to confine the plasma in which the fusion reaction is happening. And the way we do that is with a giant electromagnet. And the only way that you can create the kind of strong magnetic fields required for plasma confinement is with superconductors. Superconductors are important for fusion because they can run for hours on end without heating up. So they can be used to make the magnets that trap the fusion fuel. High temperature superconductors, often referred to as HTS, are materials that can superconduct at higher temperatures than conventional superconductors, up to 80 Kelvin or minus 193 degrees C. This requires less energy to cool them. High temperature superconductors are able to carry higher currents than conventional superconductors, which means that they can produce higher magnetic fields. They are also able to remain superconducting when they themselves are in a strong magnetic field. My name is Greg Brittles and I'm a senior magnet engineer here at Tokamak Energy. So this is a sample of tape. The tape is only 0.1 millimetres thick and it contains a one micron thick layer of the superconductor that carries all of the current. Tape is composed of multiple layers. The vast majority of the tape is metals that don't carry any current at all. So half of the tape is a substrate material called Hastaloy, which is basically like stainless steel. So that's 50 microns thick and that just gives a mechanical backbone to the tape. On top of that, you have a stack called a, a buffer stack. They give a template on which the superconductor grows. So on top of the buffer stack, you grow the HTS layer. Um, on top of that, you have a layer of silver. So the silver goes on to chemically encapsulate the superconductor. So that's the final layer is copper. So in the event that the superconductor goes normal, i.e. it loses superconductivity and starts to heat up, the current has to jump out of the superconductor into the copper so that it can cool back down again. High temperature superconductors could be a game changer for fusion in tokamaks because they enable high magnetic fields to be produced and it is the strong magnetic fields that hold the hot fusion fuels stable away from the machine's walls. Higher magnetic fields open up the possibility of building smaller, more economical fusion machines. <laughs>